Hi everyone, my name is Steven Rissoti and I am one of the engineers over at Q. I just wanted to create a recording for you to sort of walk you through the installation for Q uh, for MCUs. So this is version 1.3. I have most of it done uh, and there are a lot of slow steps so I am going to walk through it uh, with the context that I already have it ready but I did want to make sure that if you have any issues with it you have sort of a clear guide uh, on how to go about uh, installing this. One thing I would like to point out that um, you can actually find documentation for this uh, pretty easily online. Uh, it's this easy if you just plug it into Google. Uh, there's, there's pretty comprehensive documentation for Q4 MCUs. Uh, it not only uh, tells you just about everything you need to know, everything I needed to know came from here for what's new in it, what, what you need to have in order to install Q4 MCU, of course, other than the license, all of the API references, any of the tools uh, that you might need. In addition, it also has a bunch of demos and tutorials and like how to actually uh, make use of them and which boards that they're useful on. Okay, so um, I guess let's start with step one. Need to have a Q for MCU license. If you don't have that, you're stall right there. You're not going to have um, your Q for MCU is not going to show up in your installer if you don't have the appropriate license for it. So if you do have it, and I'm assuming you're using Q for MCU, you're probably either using uh, the Q installer for like the second, third time, or whatever it is, um, or you're using it for the first time. In either case, you're going to have to install from your uh, Q account. Uh, you know, the, the installation of the actual Q licenses, I have a bunch of them. Um, but uh, the Q online installer is what you really want. Okay, so I already have the Q online installer installed. Um, I like to use the Q maintenance tool to sort of highlight exactly where, uh, what you need, what, what pieces of software you need from the list of available softwares, and what you should expect to see. Um, this is if you're doing this for the very first time, these are basically the same exact steps you'd be doing anyway. The only difference is you'd also be installing the cute components in addition to the MCU stuff. Um, if you have any comments, please feel free. Like if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments as well. Um, then we will try to get to you as quickly as possible. I expect that this is pretty straightforward. Uh, when you download Qt, you have the Qt installer, and then uh, the Qt maintenance tool or the Qt installer both allow you sort of to get to this main setup screen. And uh, from there, uh, we're just going to want to add, in our case, uh, Qt MCU 1.3, that's the current version. Now, one thing while this is loading, I would like to point out if you already have Qt MC for MCU version 1.1, version 1.2, even. Uh, you might have some artifacts from like the older installs. So uh, one thing that I had was uh, set the QURL dir from my previous install uh, in, in my environment. I was getting in the way of getting things done right. That was something that I had to get rid of. Um, also, a bunch of my uh, uh, install stuff was pointing to keep for MC 1.1. You'll note that we'll, we'll actually want to set everything to whatever the latest version it is that you want to use. Okay, so in our case, uh, of course, if you are going to be, oops, sorry, there we go, download a cube for MCU version 1.3, we would like the following things. Um, if you've been following the product, you know that we have support for a few new boards now. Um, the 1060, the 1064 from uh, NXP just came by. Uh, I believe the Renaissance board is also a relatively new addition. Uh, from version 1.1, 1.2, you'll recognize the 1050 board, um, as well as the uh, L4R9 boards and the, the F4 69 boards, I believe, was also uh, all available. Okay. So this is just a list of boards. Uh, what you want to do, I mean, uh, definitely you want to have the install for the desktop available for you. This will allow you to do some emulation. Uh, even if you don't have a particular board in mind yet, you can at least get started. And then uh, in addition, you want to be able to 
grab any of these NXP, uh, you know, or like Renaissance or STM boards, or whichever one that that you're looking to work on. Now, if you're working with some specialized board that you're working with the Qt uh, R&D team with, uh, you might have an extra step here. For most boards, in most cases, you already know that you're going to be using one of these available boards, and all you need to do is you need to, you know, come down to this MCU, whatever your latest version is, pull in definitely the desktop, and in addition, the boards that you care about. The boards that I care about right now are these, um, the STM. Uh, 32F769 uh, boards, the 1050, 1060, and then the L409. In fact, I don't even think I have the 1060, but still I have it. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you'll notice that there's uh, these third party tools. The ARMGCC compiler, you definitely need um, uh, th th this, this, this guy is an essential. Any of the SDKs, in addition to that, that you might require um, to get your board running, are also listed here. In my case, of course, the 1060 matters, the 1050 matters, the STM is for all of the STM uh, F4 and F7 type uh, uh, chips. Um, I don't really deal with the cube chips, so I don't have either of those. Um, oh, sorry, the 87 and the 87 chips. So <laughs> I don't have none of those. I guess all, all of them are 12 cube, so my mistake on that. Anyway, uh, once you do that, you 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 know you'll hit next on your install. Um, and it'll start installing the, the components that you need. The reason I'm not doing that right now is because I originally made this video with that, and all it amounted to was me deleting about 20 minutes worth of, uh, uh, you know, progress bar filling up. Okay, so once you're done with that, um, I usually, because of superstition mostly, like to restart my machine uh, to make sure that the cube creator is on the same page. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention, if you're pulling the latest version of the Cube Creator, you also want to go into uh, updating your components, the same exact thing uh, with your Cube Maintenance tool, um, and you want to update to the latest version of Cube Creator. If Cube Creator is your IDE of choice, and you like all of the functionality that helps you kind of navigate through uh, you know, things that you'd be doing in command line normally, or like for maybe Visual Studio, I believe we have support for that to an extent. But, you know, if you don't want to be running CMake Make and all that stuff uh, manually, um, and you want to make use of Qt Creator and use all of its integrations, I strongly recommend. And in fact, uh, I think you'll be a lot, yeah, things will generally, just building up your kits and everything will be a lot easier if you just, you know, sort of, Pull this and download the latest version of Cube Creator. Okay, so get that out of the way. There's two things we have in mind now. So first, get the latest version of Cube Creator. Second, uh, get the the MCU files that you care about all downloaded and installed. Me personally, I like to do a reinstall, uh, a restart after that. But uh, you know, I don't think you really need to. It's just my standard operating procedure from Lord knows how far back when. And uh, so I shared it. Anyway, moving on, you, you'll come on to uh, Cute Creator. Let me clean out these projects, kind of show you how you'll start out. Uh, you should now that you have like the latest version of Cute Creator and uh, also your MCU stuff installed, uh, realize that you also need to install the uh, MCU plugin. Uh, there is an MCU plugin that you can get with the uh, about page, I believe. Oh, sorry. Next, okay, so go to help, go to about plugins, you find the one that says MCU, you make sure that this guy is on. Now, I want to lean back to the documentation a little bit just to help me out because there's a couple of steps to this. Um, and you know you don't, you don't always remember it off the top of your head. Okay, so um, there should be a getting started page right here, right? Um, let's see, quick starter guide. Okay, setting up your development environment. Um, you definitely need the MSVC compiler 19.6, which is Visual Studio 2017, 15.9.9 or newer. 
this is a requirement. Like uh, if, if you're going to do any of the work with MCU 1.3 or further, you need to have this compiler uh, already installed. Um, right now, MCU projects are all based on Windows, and the compiler of choice is the uh, Visual Studio, the, the you know the Visual Compiler, the Microsoft Visual Compiler. CMake 3.13 or newer. Uh, if you don't have this, Cute uh, Update Kit does provide you with it, so you would just add that in there um, in your update list, and then make sure that you also get that going. Um, as I was just telling you, configuring the Cute Creator IDE. This will, you know, if you have a much older version of Cute Creator IDE, I don't even know if these plugins will show up. Uh, certainly, some of the tool option stuff won't show up. First thing you want to do after you have everything installed is you want to configure your Cute Creator ID. Of course, making sure that you have these prerequisites. Okay. Now, after that, um, just like I, the first, these first steps just basically show you to activate the plugin that I just mentioned, the MCU support plugin. Um, just to show you one more time. You make sure that you have that and uh, you're good to go. Okay, uh, experimental is fine. That's that's what we are at right now. Once that's enabled, next thing to do is to build and run your application on the MCUs. You have to create a kit. This used to be a much more involved process back in 1.1, uh, 1.0. Um, you had to sort of build up your own kits uh, from scratch using, uh, uh, you know, there were still still things to help you out, but uh, we really simplified this process. So let's literally follow these directions down to the T, right? Like let's select tools, options, devices, MCU. Okay, tools, options, devices, MCU. And now, You'll notice once you uh, get to the screen that you have a bunch of targets that you can uh, build kits for. Um, th this is sort of an automated process. One of the things that's really nice here is that uh, this path should be pointing to your MCU uh, main folder path. If that's not the case, uh, you'll get a little error over here and it'll say, you know, if the path's valid and then also if it's found the bin that it's the executable that it's looking for. Um, and so after that's done, um, this here will list all of that. If you remember from our list of downloaded um, packages, the, the, the MCU options that we chose, we had a bunch of them in there that were already signed, you know, ticked. These are mine that are already ticked. And in generally what will happen is that uh, once you select, let's say, the 1060s one that I haven't done yet, I guess, um, yeah, see the 1050 is already done, so you can't create a new kit. You can always remove and recreate. I just want to create a brand new one for you, so I'm not missing any pieces. Okay, so so here's here's one thing, right? Like uh, it says that you need the GNU chain. Um, I installed the GNU ARM embedded toolchain in my C drive at this location. We did just download that with the. Uh, Cute packages as well. We can use either or. Um, another thing that you will need with the NXP boards, and this, if you look in the docs specifically for loading the uh, NXP boards, uh, you'll notice the you know, and, and working with them, you'll you, you'll find out that you need to install this MX uh, MCU Expresso IDE, um, which you can get off their website. It's free if you you have an NXP board. You probably have already done this, um, and similarly. Uh, this this is incorrect, right? The path exists, but it's not really pointing to anything for the 1060 board. And in fact, for the 1050 board, notice that I'm going to Qt Tools, Qt MCU, NXP, SDK, this. And, 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 and this is actually, I mean, it wasn't detected right away, so you'd have to correct it's a valid path, but this is actually part of the SDK stuff that I've downloaded. Right, so uh, this is part of the uh, well, cute installer stuff that came uh, with the installation that we downloaded. So you know, if you come across a situation, I'm just trying to give you all of the tips and tricks that you might need 
in order to you know kind of get around any hurdles that that I faced or that you might face uh, during this install process it's relatively easy but there are a couple of gotchas so you know in this case you you want to make sure you go to that um, appropriate file path and in fact Sorry, where was the 1051? What was that? Tools, QMCUs, NXP. Okay. So in the case of 1060, it would be see. Oops. Tools. It comes to you next Okay, and notice that I also have this ARM path to um, the ARM GCC compiler. Um, this this path, if if I didn't already have like the correct, uh, if I didn't already have the ARM GCC um, package installed, um, I would have pointed to that. Uh, I think in the future what I'll probably do is point it to that. They're both valid paths. Uh, this one actually comes with Qt, so you won't make the mistake because it is very easy because there is like a, a very specific version of it that you want. So if you get it from Qt directly, uh, just use that one. Um, okay, uh, this is one of those places where you can save yourself some headache rather than getting like a Q4 2019 versus a Q3 2019 version of the same uh, ARM embedded tool chain. Uh, you just get the right one directly if uh, you know you install it as a third party install and you just point to it in Qt tools um, under MCUs and then then the ARM or like the NXP or the STM whatever it is okay so once you set that up you can create a kit to create a kit it just creates a kit for you so what does that mean right um, these kits Actually, we have a bunch of them. Uh, I have a bunch of them because I have different compilers, different requirements uh, for different times that I'm, that I'm using these things. But let's take a quick look at... Oh, that was, uh, I'm not even sure that one's set up. Okay. So let's take a quick look at this one. So the automatic desktop kit. What it gave me was... Um, yeah, the C++, the C and the C++ compiler set to the Microsoft Visual Compiler. It's got um, the debugger set to the CDB. That's just the Windows debugger uh, that I have set. I have a couple of these pads that, that, that point to like the Qt creator bin. That's fine. The QULDER, which is described as like the you know the main path in CMake for all of your MCU needs. That's appropriately pointed to 1.3, which is what we want. Um, there's there's a few more CMake configuration things that are. Um, set up automatically for you. You used to have to do all of this manually. Now it's just all done automatically for you. Okay. So with all of this set, the next piece of course is to try to try to run uh, one of these projects for yourself. Right. And in fact, I usually, so I have a, a 1050 board handy that uh, I'm not going to be able to show you but uh, you can kind of take my word for it that I tested everything both on desktop and then on my 1050 board and made sure that the exact same uh, appropriate program was, was showing up on the screen. Okay, so what's what's the simplest thing I can do here? I can I can create a new project, right? Uh, so here's another thing that you kind of learn here is that. You can now create projects, MCU projects, directly using the Qt Creator. I think this has been around for a couple of versions now, but it's a nice little thing that gives you all of the, uh, you know, the required files and the setup, of the folder structure that you require. Okay, um, test. That's my name. And you can select your kids like usual. I uh, like to deselect them all most of the time. In this case, we'll set up these two guys because I know that will work. 
Okay, and it's uh, really as simple as that. Um, in the case of this really simple salmon, uh, I don't know if you like salmon as a color, but we need to, to, to run this guy. demonstrate that you can do a simple hello world application it builds and it runs and this is sort of our PC simulated version of what would you expect to see on your MCU screen I have tested this program again uh, with the 1050 board and there were a couple things that I wanted to to mention about that now for each of the different board types that you run there's going to be slightly different um, documentation to, to get things running and, and all of the things that I've by the way mentioned um, for keep for MCU all of this information is really just beautifully done with the documentation uh, engineers did a really really good job of just putting it all in one place and kind of giving you everything that I've just talked about in a nice written package uh, again it's docs uh, doc.cute.io slash keep for MCUs and uh, is the main page slash index um, and and uh, if you google it just like I did in the beginning of this video you know docs cute for MCU 1.3 it'll show up or whatever the latest version is um, again the thing I want to really talk about is uh, well first it'll tell you you know for example if you want to run an NXP board It'll tell you you want the Qt for MCU SDK. We download that. We have the latest uh, version of Qt Creator. I prefer to have the latest one, especially if you're going with the latest version of the MCU, because as the uh, for each of the iterations of the MCU project, we're adding more and more um, sort of facilities to help make the experience better. And when you match up that latest version of Qt for MCU to that latest version of Qt Creator, you tend to have the best experience. Um, of course, uh, oh, this is that our specific ARM tool chain that I was talking to uh, to you about. This tool tool chain, the quarter three update, is the one that comes with as part of your like third party kit. Uh, this is the MCU Expresso link. In, in case you were wondering where that was all about, all of that information is right here. Flashing um, is, uh, of course, you know how how do you how do you flash your actual board? And uh, one of the things that it's very easy to trip up is that if you don't have the right firmware for the flashing, right? Your, your default firmware is not necessarily going to be the right one for getting Qprem CUs to run. Uh, follow these directions. Uh, I've done them and uh, I've definitely tried, you know, kind of skipping, skipping them and just trying to get things working. And then I ended up right back here uh, to actually having to follow them correctly. And these directions, so if, if you worked on 1.1 or like 1.0, these directions may have changed since that time. So if your board worked perfectly fine for MCU 1.0, but it's not working for 1.3, um, this is a, it's a really good idea to kind of follow through the directions for 1.3 all the way through. Uh, you might find something like, you know, maybe the, the, the flash firmware is slightly different or something like that. Um, either way, it's not going to hurt to actually follow all of the directions, uh, especially when they're so beautifully laid out for you on these docs page. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong with that. Okay, so in addition, when, you, when you're setting up your own board, what I'd like to talk about really quickly is that setting up your development environment uh, for for your board, um, you know, you, you, you have all these directions to go to that devices, that MCU page that we just went over in tools uh, to create the kit, uh, make sure that, uh, you know, you have all of the appropriate uh, paths for your uh, for your specific board, uh, make sure you you know if you downloaded those paths, you're pointing to them correctly. It's a common pitfall, you know, if you, if you don't if you're not pointing to the right tool chain, you're not going to get your code working. Following that, there's a couple different ways to uh, sort of you know, run things. You know, of course, you can uh, create your uh, uh, binaries a couple different ways. Uh, one of the more, uh, we, we have a bunch of demos for them. One of the more interesting things is actually getting um, 
uh, uh, debug running. Uh, I think debug is still a little bit of work in process, but what I have been able to do is generate the, uh, you know, just, just from Qt Creator, generate the, uh, get the debugger going. You have to have uh, Red Link sort of working in the background. You have to have your uh, uh, ARM, uh, well, this is the manual way of doing it. You can, you can get your ARM debug. Uh, debugger GDB uh, running with your uh, your actual binary or directly from Cube Creator, you just uh, hit the play button and it'll 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 run it for you. Right, uh, you hit the debugger, it'll run it for you. Um, in fact, I don't believe if I'm in. Debug mode that. I don't think the option's even available right now. But yeah, if you hit play in this case, and your board's connected, and you you, you have it on the, uh, you know, um, you have that. I believe you might still need that red lit thing going. Um, but you hit play, and it'll actually push the files directly to your board. Um, as long as your board is connected, it has the correct firmware. Uh, all of that works all the way through. That's it. And uh, so that was my video to explain basically uh, in short, simple steps with some tips and tricks for like, you know, what to avoid, what to do uh, for getting your cute project up and going. Um, there's more interesting projects uh, that we can maybe make more videos about, like uh, how, to, how to get them running. If you are going to use any of these example projects and you have a board running, just make sure that, you know, you're running it for the correct board. Of course, for the PC emulation, you can run any of them. But let's say if this specific demo doesn't support your board, you might need to do some tweaking yourself to get it working because it might not have been originally made for your board. Of course, you can, you know, depending on your level of uh, energy, you can you can adapt these different projects to to take advantage of only the the piece of the um, the components and like the features of your specific board. Okay, um, it's one of the more interesting ones. Oh, it's actually going to try to run it on my. Oh, I wish I had a camera for you. This is actually going to try to run it on my uh, board. Now that it's started, I kind of want to make sure that it runs, and maybe I'll throw in a picture at the end. Actually, I'm not even sure I have it. You know what? Let me. Oh yeah, doesn't exist, right? Try to get a running for that stuff real quick.
Oh, there we go. All right, so that's your uh, little desktop demo. Uh, I will try to get an actual camera on a board next time. Uh, maybe do some board demos uh, based on these things that we've seen. Maybe get a couple extra boards. Uh, just so I can demonstrate a few more of those. But that's all I have for now. And thank you for watching. Have a good one.